So today it's the turn of the classic quarter inch jack plug, nearly 140 year old invention, and it stood the test of time quite well. Now I'm gonna show you two different types of jack and how to wire them up and how to repair your guitar leads or your keyboard leads. You save a packet doing this. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the two families. We've got the Neutrick side over here. Now Neutrick are well known for very, very high quality, long lasting connectors. And actually I try to use those whenever I can. Now you have uh, an outer, what I've done is I've made up um, a lead that goes from two phonos here to two jack plugs. Useful if you want to connect a CD player or a cassette recorder, showing me age, up to a PA system and the PA system only has jack input. So you can just make some, make up something like this. Uh, so uh, I'm going to, rec I've got one side attached here. I'm going to attach the other side. Now with the Neutrick, you have to put this connector on first. There we go. Then your strain relief. You can put the strain relief on afterwards, but uh, I'm gonna just put it on now. So just so you get used to sorting out the order of your connectors. Now, I'm going to now strip this cable off to fit this Neutrick connector. Now notice this jack plug doesn't have any strain relief or any clamps on it. It's just two solder buckets, a small one in the middle, which is where your signal wire goes, and one on the outside, which is where your ground goes. So. I'm going to strip off about half an inch from this cable, revealing a white core, which is going to be your signal, and all the bits of copper around the side, which are your ground. So first of all, I've got to separate all the little ground wires. You can also see this on my XLR video. If you have a look at my channel, you can see the uh, XLR repair, uh, which is a similar operation to this. So there's my uh, ground wire all rolled into one neat little wire. Now I've got my signal wire stripped off. There, there are your two connectors there. Now there's my solder. So I'm just going to tin the ends of these uh, bits of cable. It's really important you do this. If you try and solder this directly onto something and dr drop a load of solder on it, it's not going to work. You have to solder both bits and then join them together. So. Just a brief uh, heating of the soldering arm will do it. There we go. So I'm just going to put the solder on here. Sometimes you have to melt the solder first with the iron so that the iron is at the correct temperature. There we go. So now we've got solder and solder there. We're ready to go. So both of the necessary bits are on the cable first, the, um, the outer sheath and the, and the um, strain relief. Now comes the jack plug. The main body of the jack goes, of a Neutrick jack, goes on afterwards, uh, not before as with the other jack, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, the length of the cable required here, actually I can chop some of the ground wire off because it's closer to where the cable comes in. It just means it's a bit neater and it's less likely that you'll get problems with uh, cap the cables being under strain. So I'm going to quickly drop, um, I'm going to put the central core in first. So you heat the solder that's already in there. This is a second hand plug so there's already solder in there. I, if it was new, I'd have to drop some solder into the wire first. So that's the central core, which has gone in there. Then the outside core, the ground, goes onto this little connector here. Now you might have to just drop a, just tin the iron a bit, just to make sure that it can melt all the solder that's there. And there we go. Now with the Neutrick one, the signal wire and the ground wire are quite close together. Try not to get the iron so that it melts through your central core, otherwise it's a bit of a mess and you have to start again. So I'm going to bring the strain relief up to the connector. You can see that there's a little rebate which allows connection to the jack plug there. Then my outer core goes on, outer metal piece, uh, and make sure that it drags up all the way through. So it reveals the entire jack plug and then just screw the end on. And the good thing about the Neutrick stuff is it's very it's very flexible with the cable width that you use. At the moment there's a very, a very narrow 
cable going in there because this is just one of those uh, used to be a phono to phono lead that just comes with your stereo system. When I have those I'll just convert them into things like this, just useful cables you can have uh, for uh, when the need arises. So uh, now I'm going to check the connectors using my cable tester. So I've got um, the cable that I've just soldered, there we go, and the the phono jack the other side. There we go. So, two and two, that's the signal wire. One and one is the ground, but it's also connected to pin three. That's because I'm using a mono jack, but really one and two are what we're concerned with here. Um, that takes a little bit of um, understanding with the uh, cable tester, but the instructions for it actually do give you a, a very good idea of how to use it. So, there is my fully working phono to jack connector. Now. The next cable I have is just a cable that I use for plugging a keyboard into an amplifier. It's got a jack one end and then blank cable the other. So I'm going to show you the other family of jacks that we have. Most of the other manufacturers make it this way. Neutrik do that different um, setup. I actually really like the Neutrik ones. They're very easy to use, very easy to solder up. Now, the second one has an outer case, the jack plug itself, piece of plastic sheath, just a, like a um, plastic tube, and a spring which is serves as a strain relief. The order on, what, on which these things go is outer case onto the cable first, followed by the spring, so that when you hold the jack plug up, there we go, you can see that the spring goes into the jack. Then the, the plastic case, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute, why that's there, and then the jack plug. Now this time we've got a central tag, which is going to be your signal wire, and we have the rest of it, which is your ground. And incorporated into that is a grip that holds the cable. So you don't want to go too mad by gripping the cable with this. You just need to make sure it doesn't move. If you grip the cable too much, you'll just crush the inner core and then you'll end up with no jack lead. So this time I'm going to take about three quarters of an inch, roughly, two centimetres or so, off the cable, and that reveals the copper around the outside. There we go. Now, this is quite an old cable, so the copper's gone a bit dark and tarnished, but hopefully, it will take the solder that I'm about to give it. There we go. I'll twist those together, and then the inner core which is slightly fresher copper. There we go. So I'm going to tin the ends of the copper using the soldering iron. There we go. There's my inner core done. Note that when I heat the cable up, the plastic does recede a little that surrounds that central core. So you've got to be really quick with the iron to make sure you don't melt too much of it off. Then I'm going to do the ground wire. Oh, it is taking solder. It's Yeah, it just takes a little bit more. Heating, just to take it. There we go. There we go. Don't hold that on there there too long because you can actually melt through the inner core again. It's quite a few things just to watch out for. But when you test it afterwards, as long as you're in business, as long as it shows a correct reading on your cable tester, you're there. And I've got now my jack plug here. Now my central core is going to go up to this um, this little tag here. But I'm going to hold the cable using this clamp there, like that. Now there are two ways you could do this. You could either get your central core and and just wire it up, leaving a bit of loose cable, or you can cut it to length. Now I'm going to use a bit of loose cable because then it protects the ground wire, actually acts as a bit of a, a strain relief for the central core, which is weaker. There we go. So I've now soldered that on there. Now you've got an option with this ground wire, whether you want to solder it to the, the side of the tag or to the actual base of the jack. I'm going to do the base of the jack. So I've just got to drop some solder onto here. Now when you hold the solder on here with a soldering iron, it'll just form a nice pool of solder in the middle. There we go, there it is. That will do. 
Now I'm going to cut the ground wire so that it is the correct length. So I'm going to cut most of it off actually. It does vary with jack plugs and don't feel you're wasting cable doing this or um, because actually when you've done the job correctly the first time you'll end up with a jack that is just going to work and keep working and keep working and keep working. There we go. So holding this on there, middle finger and annular finger holding the jack and then index finger and thumb to direct the cable into position. I'm going to just briefly, what? Just, I'm going to just, there we go, holding that in position, I'm going to briefly touch the iron on there. Now if you're brief with this, you won't burn your fingers because you're essentially holding the same piece of metal that you're soldering. Now, there we go, there is my finished uh, cable. Now I'm just going to get a pair of pliers and just gently just clamp it in position, but you don't need to go too mad with this. You just need to stop the cable. There we go, that will do. You need to stop the cable moving uh, out of in and out of the jack plug. And then I grab my the rest of the things that I put on the soldering uh, put on the cable before soldering. This little piece of plastic here just prevents this top connector here from touching the inside of the metal jack housing which is connected to ground and you don't want that. Now I can push this on there and then screw it up like that and then get my cable tester and I should find that I've got continuity between pins one and one, two and two. So here we go, here's the acid test. One and one with three as well, as I had explained before. But we're not interested in pin three for a mono jack plug. One and one. Oh, we have ourselves a problem. There we go. All right, I think it's this end. Now, that means that I've got to chop it off and start again. Now I'm not sure why that happened, whether it's my soldering or whether there's actually a break in the cable. So what you can do is you can take the plastic sheeting off again, then put the cable back in the tester. Don't worry about the voltage of the tester, it only passes a very sh tiny voltage. Ah, right. Now that works. So I've got to find out why that connector stopped working. Could be that the piece of plastic has some issue with the cable. Now that's not reliable enough for me. I, I'm not just going to make it uh, uh, work and then hope that it works in on the gig because it won't. So best bet is to chop it off and have another go. So as I said, because this isn't done up too tightly, it's easy to get it off again. So this is quite a good thing, actually, because it shows how to get the old cable off the jack that you've just wired up. I just desoldered the signal wire there. And now I'm just going to desolder the ground. There it is. OK, so take two. The other bits of cable are still there. So I'm just going to take off the outer sheathing of this cable again. Now, there we go, there it is. Now I'm going to do a little preliminary test before I wire this up again because it might just be that the cable is a bit too old and a bit too crotchety to work at work anymore. Um, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the keep the cable tester with the jack in it, put the jack plug in it and touch the connector on here. Okay, that seems a bit better. So I'm just going to very quickly solder this up and start again. I do studio installations where I have to wire up channel after channel after channel of jacks and XLRs. Once you've done it once, maybe you've done an eight track, eight channel loom or something, suddenly you get very, very quick at it. 
um, because it can be a bit demoralised if you're thinking this is going to take me hours, and actually you get you just speed up. Okay, so I'm going to put the ground wire on first. There we go, and then the signal wire on there like that. There we go. Now I'm going to just plug it back in here. Make sure I've still got continuity. Yep, yeah, one and one, and two and two. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I think we're in business now. So the cable is obviously a little bit dodgy at the um, at the um, at this end. And then I'm going to clamp the clamp back down just so the cable can't move. Make sure you don't chop it through the signal wire as well. That's the disadvantage of these is that actually there is a bit more to go wrong whereas the Neutrik ones are very easy to use. Now I'm going to put the piece of plastic over the top there we go and then tighten that up and lastly I'm going to give it a test one to one there we go yeah I should say that's working there we go and there are your two different types of jack plug. Now you can buy a reel of cable, um, you know, a hundred metre reel, for example, for you know forty or fifty pounds, which is good cable, and then get a load of Neutrik connectors. They're about two pound fifty a pop. So a fiver, if you make it to fifty pounds plus the third, that's a hundred pounds. But that will do you ten guitar cables. Uh, sometimes uh, that's a tenner a cable but in the shops they're 40 quid so it's up to you and of course you can make them just bespoke lengths you can make pedal patch leads you can make keyboard leads you can just do any le length uh, cable that you want so there we go soldering iron solder a couple of tools and a couple of hours and you've got your jacks repaired or created